Rituximab is a monoclonal anti-CD20 antibody used to treat non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, Wegener's granulomatosis, pemphigus vulgaris, and rheumatoid arthritis. In this video, let's find found. What is rituximab? What class of drug is rituximab? What is rituximab used to treat? Who cannot use rituximab? What are the side effects of taking rituximab? How does rituximab make you feel? How to use rituximab? What is rituximab? What class of drug is rituximab? Rituximab, sold under the brand name Rituxan among others, is a monoclonal antibody medication used to treat certain autoimmune diseases and types of cancer. Rituximab was approved for medical use in 1997. It is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines. Rituximab is co-marketed by Biogen and Genentech in the U.S., by Hoffman La Roche in Canada and the European Union, Chugai Pharmaceuticals, Zenyaku Kojo in Japan and Ariogen in Iran. What is rituximab used to treat? Rituximab is indicated for the treatment of adult patients with relapsed or refractory, low-grade or follicular, CD20 positive, B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, NHL, as a single agent. Also, it is indicated for the treatment of adult patients with previously unfollicular, CD20 positive, B cell NHL in combination with first line chemotherapy and, in patients achieving a complete or partial response to a rituximab product in combination with chemotherapy, as single agent maintenance therapy. Additionally, rituximab is indicated for the treatment of adult patients on progressing, including stable disease, low-grade, CD20 positive, B-cell NHL as a single agent after first-line cyclophosphamide, vincristine, and prednisone, CVP, chemotherapy, and previously untreated diffuse large B-cell, CD20 positive NHL in combination with cyclophosphamide, therubicin, vincristine, prednisone, CHOP, or other anthracycline-based chemotherapy regimens. Rituximab, in combination with fludarabine and cyclophosphamide, FC, is indicated for the treatment of adult patients with previously untreated and previously treated CD20-positive chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL. Who cannot use rituximab? Rituximab, rituxin, is contraindicated in patients with known severe, active infection, hypersensitivity to any of the components of the formulation. Severe heart failure. Uncontrolled cardiac disease. Pregnancy. What are the side effects of taking rituximab? You may experience symptoms such as fever, shaking chills, joint pain, tiredness, headache, or nausea while you are receiving a dose of a rituximab product, especially the first dose. Tell your doctor or other healthcare provider if you experience these symptoms while you are receiving your medication. Pharmacodynamics. Rituximab is a chimeric murine slash human monoclonal antibody that binds to the CD20 antigen. CD20 is predominantly expressed on the surface of pre-B and mature B lymphocytes, allowing rituximab to target and promote lysis in this specific type of cells. In non-Hodgkin's lymphoma patients, rituximab treatment depleted circulating and tissue-based B cells. In a study that included 166 patients, CD19 positive B cells were depleted within three weeks, and in 83% of patients, cell depletion lasted up to six to nine months. Cell levels started to recover at approximately six months and returned to normal 12 months after treatment was completed. Approximately 14% of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma patients had IgM or IgG serum levels below the normal range. Most rheumatoid arthritis, RA, patients treated with rituximab share complete depletion of peripheral B lymphocytes within two weeks after the first dose. Peripheral B cell depletion was sustained for at least six months, and in approximately 4% of RA patients, peripheral B cell depletion was sustained for more than three years after a single course of rituximab treatment. Pharmacodynamics Rituximab is a chimeric murine slash human monoclonal antibody that binds to the CD20 antigen. CD20 is predominantly expressed on the surface of pre-B and mature B lymphocytes, allowing rituximab to target and promote lysis in this specific type of cells.
In non-Hodgkin's lymphoma patients, rituximab treatment depleted circulating and tissue-based B-cells. In a study that included 166 patients, CD19-positive B-cells were depleted within three weeks, and in 83% of patients, cell depletion lasted up to six to nine months. Cell levels started to recover at approximately six months and returned to normal 12 months after treatment was completed. Approximately 14% of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma patients had IgM or IgG serum levels below the normal range. Most rheumatoid arthritis, RA, patients treated with rituximab share complete depletion of peripheral B lymphocytes within two weeks after the first dose. Peripheral B cell depletion was sustained for at least six months, and in approximately 4% of RA patients, peripheral B cell depletion was sustained for more than three years after a single course of rituximab treatment. Half-life. In patients with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, NHL, Treated with rituximab once a week or once every three weeks, N equals 298, the median terminal elimination half-life was 22 days, range of 6.1 to 52 days. In patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, treated with rituximab, N equals 21, the estimated median terminal half-life was 32 days, range of 14 to 62 days. How to use rituximab? Non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Relapsed or refractory, low-grade or follicular, CD20 positive, B-cell NHL. Indicated for treatment of patients with relapsed or refractory, low-grade or follicular, CD20 positive, B-cell NHL as a single agent. 375 mg per square meter 4 once weekly X4 to 8 doses. Retreatment, 375 mg per square meter 4 once weekly X4 doses. In combination with ibrutumumab. Day 1, rituximab, 250 grams per square meter 4. Day 7, 8, or 9, rituximab, 250 milligrams per square meter 4. Administer ibrutumumab within 4 hour following completion of rituximab infusion. Refer to ibrutumumab tiaxetin for full prescribing information regarding regimen. Previously, it follicular, CD20 positive, B cell NHL. Indicated in previously untreated follicular, CD20 positive, B cell NHL in combination with first line chemotherapy and, in patients achieving a complete or partial response to rituximab product in combination with chemotherapy, as single agent therapy. 375 mg per square meter 4 on day 1 of each chemotherapy cycle for up to 8 doses. Maintenance therapy following 8 weeks after completion of combination chemotherapy in patients with complete or partial response. Initiate as a single agent Q8 weeks X 12 doses. In combination with ibrutumumab. Day 1, rituximab 250 mg per square meter 4. Day 7, 8, or 9, rituximab 250 mg per square meter 4. Administer ibrutumumab within 4 hour following completion of rituximab infusion. Refer to ibrutumumab tiaxetin for full prescribing information regarding regimen. Non-progressing, including stable disease, low-grade, CD20 positive, B-cell NHL. Indicated for treatment in patients with non-progressing, including stable disease, low-grade, CD20 positive, B-cell NHL as an agent after first-line cyclophosphamide, vincristine and prednisone, CVP, chemotherapy. Following completion of 6 to 8 cycles of CVP chemotherapy, 375 mg per square meter for once weekly X4 doses at 6-month intervals for up to 16 doses. Isly untreated diffuse large B cell, CD20 positive NHL. Indicated for treatment in patients with previously untreated diffuse large B cell. CD20 positive NHL in combination with CHOP or other anthracycline based chemotherapy regimens. 375 mg per square meter on day one of each cycle of chemotherapy for up to eight infusions. Chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Indicated for untreated and previously treated CD20 positive CLL, combined therapy with fludarabine and cyclophosphamide FC. 375 mg per square meter 4 infant on day 1 of first cycle, for first cycle, administer one day before chemotherapy with FC, then. 
500 mg per square meter for on day 1 of cycles 2 to 6, administer on same day as chemotherapy with FC. Fludarabine and cyclophosphamide dosage, fludine, 25 mg per square meter for Q day X 3 days. Cyclophosphamide, 250 mg per square meter for Q day X 3 days. Repeat Q28 days X 6 cycles. Rheumatoid arthritis. Indicated, in combination with Trexate, for treatment of moderately to severely active rheumatoid arthritis, RA, who have had an inadequate response to greater than or equal to one tumor necrosis factor, TNF, antagonist therapies. 1000 mg for infusion, repeat after two week, two infusions separated by two week is once. Repeat course Q24 weeks or based on clinical evaluation, but no sooner than 16 weeks. Not to exceed 1,000 mg per dose. Wegener granulomatosis. Indicated for adults with granulomatosis with polyangitis, GPA, Wegener granulomatosis, in combination with glucocorticoids. Induction, 375 mg per square meter for Q week X4 weeks. Follow-up treatment. If disease control achieved with induction treatment, initiate follow-up treatment. Induction treatment with rituximab, initial follow-up treatment within 24 weeks after last rituximab induction dose or based on clinical evaluation, but no sooner than 16 weeks after last induction dose. Induction treatment with other standard of care immunosuppressants, initiate follow-up treatment within 4 weeks following achievement of disease control. 500 grams 4 on days 1 and 15, then Q6 months thereafter, based on clinical evaluation. Glucocorticoid regimen. Also see premedication. Induction. Methylprednisolone 1000 mg for Q day X 1 to 3 days, followed by prednisone PO 1 gram per kilogram per day, not to exceed 80 mg per day and tapered per clinical need, are recommended to treat severe vasculitis symptoms. Begin within 14 days before or with initiation of rituximab and may continue during and after the 4 week induction course. Follow-up treatment. Methylprednisolone 100 mg 4 to be completed 30 minutes before each rituximab 4 infusion. Microscopic polyangitis. Indicated for adults with microscopic polyangitis, MPA, in combination with glucocorticoids. Induction, 375 mg per square meter, Q week X 4 weeks. Follow-up treatment. If disease control achieved with induction treatment, initiate follow-up treatment. Induction treatment with rituximab, initiate follow-up treatment within 24 weeks after last rituximab induction dose or based on clinical evaluation, but no sooner than 6 weeks after last induction dose. Induction treatment with other standard of care immunosuppressants, initiate follow-up treatment within 4 weeks following achievement of disease control. 500 mg 4 on days 1 and 15, then Q6 months thereafter, based on clinical evaluation. Corticoid regimen. Also see premedication. Induction. Methylprednisolone 1000 mg 4 Q day X 1 to 3 days, followed by prednisone PO 1 mg per kilogram per day, not to exceed 80 mg per day and tapered per clinical need, are recommended to treat severe vasculitums. Begin within 14 days before or with initiation of rituximab and may continue during and after the 4-week induction course. Follow-up treatment. Methylprednisolone 100 mg 4 to be completed 30 minutes before each rituximab 4 infusion. Pemphigus plus. Rituxan only. Indicated for adults with moderate to severe pemphigus vulgaris, PV. Initial, 1000 mg 4 once. Then repeat dose in two weeks, i.e., two 1000 mg doses, two weeks apart, use in combination with a tapering course of glucocorticoids. Maintenance, 500 mg 4 at month 12 and Q6 months thereafter, or based on clinical evaluation. Treatment relapse, 1000 mg 4 and consider resuming or increasing the glucocorticoid dose based on clinical evaluation. Orphan designations of immune thrombocytopenic purpura, ITP. Sponsor. Genentech, Inc., 1DNA Way.
South San Francisco, California, 94080-4990. Rasmussen encephalitis, orphan. Orphan designation for treatment of Rasmussen encephalitis. Are there specific concerns about rituximab and pregnancy? Rituximab carries a Food and Drug Administration Pregnancy Category C. Animal reproduction studies have shown an adverse effect on the fetus and there are no adequate and well-controlled studies in humans, but potential benefits may warrant use of the drug in pregnant women despite potential risks. That's all the information about rituximab we collected. Thanks for listening. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe for the He Info channel if you liked this video to update more health information.